Hi guys, JT here and today I'm bringing you some information on the additional 6 games in Fanatical's Prestige Collection of May 2023. To help you answer the question, should you buy it? If you find this video helpful, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support means everything. Anyway, let's get into this. And number 1 we have Super Liminal a first-person adventure game that takes you on a surreal journey through a dreamscape filled with optical illusions. The game introduces unique perspective puzzles that go beyond a surface-level comparison to Portal. As you progress through the game, you'll find yourself using objects in clever ways, like using a slice of cheese as a ramp or a tiny fan to move a giant block of Jenga. The game's world is filled with never-ending corridors, and you constantly feel the presence of a morally ambiguous force watching you. The adventure begins when you fall asleep to an advertisement for Somna Sculpt, a dream therapy promising to cure self-doubt. However, you wake up inside a dream and get trapped in a series of increasingly abstract dreams. Alongside a frantic robotic voice and the confused voice of a doctor, Glenn Pierce, you navigate through mind-bending puzzles, exploring the depths of your own imagination. Superliminal stands out by incorporating forced perspective mechanics, where objects change size and position based on how you interact with them. Puzzles involve transforming objects, placing them on pressure plates, and manipulating perspective points. The game introduces new challenges at a steady pace, keeping the gameplay fresh and engaging. With 9 chapters, each presenting its own puzzle theme, Superliminal gradually becomes more surreal and absurd. The 3D environments, though simple in design, are brightly coloured and complemented by a jazzy piano soundtrack. The voice acting, particularly the Scottish tones of Dr. Pierce, adds to the game's humour and atmosphere. The game's roughly 4 hour playtime offers an emotional and thought provoking experience. While some puzzles may be relatively simple, Superliminal's constant reinvention and final message make it a unique and enjoyable adventure. And number 2 we have Metro Exodus, a game that succeeds in its ambition to combine different genres and provide a captivating gameplay experience. The post-apocalyptic game offers crafting-focused survival elements, character-driven story, atmospheric horror, and shooter modes. The game is set a decade after the second game, where players take on the role of Atio, who joins a group in search of a new home and other survivors, travelling aboard the Aurora train. The train serves as a mobile sanctuary, where players can interact with NPCs, complete site missions, craft and replenish supplies, and explore the vast environments. The UI is clean, and the absence of quest givers jumping with neon question marks is a welcome change. Metro Exodus is not an open world game, but the winter, spring, and summer environments are expansive and feel like one. The game offers players the choice to approach missions during the day or at night, with both options providing different experiences. The monsters that come out at night offer a thrilling challenge, and the stealth approach works best when infiltrating a human base. Overall, the game's different elements are knit together into a bizarre and thrilling train journey that is overwhelmingly brilliant. This game is a must-play if you like a great post-apocalyptic game with a great narrative that has a more serious tone than the likes of Fallout. And number 3 we have Martha is Dead a historical horror indie game that delves into disturbing themes such as child abuse, self-harm, torture, and Nazis. You assume the role of an Italian teenager, Julia, navigating the death of her twin sister and the tensions of World War II. The game combines elements of interactive adventure and walking simulator genres, allowing you to explore Julia's home, take photographs, and uncover the truth behind the events. However, the gameplay feels clunky and lacks polish, with slow-paced back-and-forth movement and menial tasks. The inclusion of a bicycle proves to be more frustrating than helpful. While the game presents intriguing horror concepts such as non-exploitative female body horror and creepy puppets, the gameplay restricts their impact. The telegraph system used to communicate with the resistance becomes tedious, and the use of a rotary phone could feel cumbersome. Despite these flaws, the photography mechanic stands out, offering an interesting way to discover stories and capture moments. Martha is Dead progressively becomes more gruesome and unsettling, with graphic violence and disturbing scenes. The game's content can be too intense for some audiences. Although it may appeal to horror enthusiasts who can tolerate the uneven gameplay, it is crucial to consider its explicit and distressing nature before playing the game. And number 4 we have Airborne Kingdom, a city builder game set in the clouds. In this game, you aim to build a flying city and make everyone love you. The game offers a unique twist of its airborne setting and physics-based challenges. As you construct your city, you must ensure it remains balanced and doesn't tilt too much, as that can cause citizens to leave. The city's lift must be carefully managed to maintain stability. Coal is a crucial resource for keeping the city afloat, and you need to manage it efficiently. The game combines familiar city building mechanics with the added challenge of physics. You must plan and adjust your city layouts to counteract the forces of gravity. 
As you explore the world below, you gather resources to sustain your city and encounter other settlements and cities. Building alliances with these ground-based cities is a key objective. However, the game's breezy pace and lack of complex decision-making made the alliance process feel simplistic. Despite these minor flaws, Airborne Kingdom offers a relaxing and visually appealing experience. The game allows for creative freedom in city design, and the vibrant visuals bring the cities alive. The absence of combat and the focus on exploration and trade contribute to the game's laid-back atmosphere. The game manages to strike a balance between depth and accessibility, with a wealth of content packed into a relatively short playtime. In conclusion, Airborne Kingdom is a charming and enjoyable city builder that provides a unique twist to the genre. While it may lack some depth in certain aspects, its atmospheric setting, creative possibilities, and relaxing gameplay make it a worthwhile experience for fans of city building games. And number 5 we have Iron Harvest, a spectacular real time strategy game set in an alternate 1920s world inspired by World War I. The game offers an exciting and dramatic gameplay experience. The game's main attraction is the array of awe-inspiring mechs that you can command, ranging from a crack sniper lady with a pet bear, to walking oil drums armed with heavy machine guns and even a quadrupedal personnel carrier that fires mortars from its roof. The attention to detail in the designs and animations of these war machines is delightful. The gameplay evolves around battling over resource-generating control points on the map, and destroying the enemy headquarters. The base building and maintenance aspects are streamlined, allowing the game to focus on combat and conquest. Matches start small, with infantry squads engaging in pot shots, and gradually escalate to include more advanced types of infantry and powerful mechs. The spectacle of combat is phenomenal, with mechs trading massive cannon shots that leave sectors scarred and buildings reduced to rubble. The sound design creates a cacophonous hellscape that adds to the immersive experience. Iron Harvest features three campaigns, each focusing on a different faction and seamlessly combining into one story. The campaigns offer a mix of RTS skirmishes and character-focused missions, showcasing the variety of gameplay scenarios. However, there are some weaknesses, such as spotty cover mechanics and AI infantry running directly into the line of fire. The large, slow-moving mechs can make matches drag on excessively. But overall, Iron Harvest is a solid and spectacular RTS game, standing as a worthy successor to the best games in the genre. And number 6 we have Pathfinder Kingmaker Enhanced Plus Edition, an isometric RPG. It was originally released in 2018, but was later updated and re-released at the Enhanced Plus Edition in 2020. The game story follows the player character, a noble adventurer who has been tasked with exploring and conquering the stolen lands in the name of the ruling king. Along the way, you'll need to recruit a party of loyal companions, build and manage a kingdom, and uncover the secrets of the stolen land. One of the standout features of Pathfinder Kingmaker is its deep and complex character customization system. You can choose from a wide range of races and classes, each of their own unique abilities and skills. The game also features a deep leveling system that allows you to customize your characters in a variety of ways, including selecting feats, spells, and abilities. In addition to its character customization system, Pathfinder Kingmaker also features a robust kingdom management system. You'll need to build and manage a kingdom, recruit advisors, and make decisions that will shape the fate of your realm. This adds an extra layer of depth to the game, and players who enjoy strategy and management games will find a lot to like here. The game's combat system is also noteworthy, featuring a real-time with pause system that allows you to strategically plan your actions in the midst of a battle. The game's combat encounters are challenging and varied, and you'll need to carefully manage your party's resources and abilities to emerge victorious. Another standout feature of Pathfinder Kingmaker is its world building. The game's world is rich and detailed, with a wide range of locations to explore, NPCs to interact with, and secrets to uncover. The game also features a robust dialogue system that allows you to choose your own path and shape the outcome of the story. The Enhanced Plus edition of the game includes a number of updates and improvements over the original release. These include new story content, additional character customization options, improved graphics and performance, and a range of bug fixes and quality of life improvements. Overall, Pathfinder Kingmaker Enhanced Plus edition is an excellent isometric RPG that offers a deep and engaging experience for fans of the genre. With its deep character customization system, robust kingdom management mechanics, challenging combat encounters, and rich world building, there's a lot to like here. The game's updates and improvements in Enhanced Plus Edition only make an already great game even better. If you're a fan of RPGs or if you're looking for a deep and rewarding gaming experience, Pathfinder Kingmaker Enhanced Plus Edition is definitely worth checking out. And that's all for these additional games in the Prestige Bundle. The additional games are alright. Most of them were previously available in other bundles. But if you miss them, these games will keep you busy for a while. In any case, kindly show your support by liking and subscribing to the channel. I look forward to connecting with you in the upcoming video.